people have been asking, especially my dad, who passed away one year ago, and he was like, why don't you keep your name Fatim? You're spoiled already, because Fatima is actually, they call her Fatim if they want to spoil her. And I insisted, no, I'll just keep a stage name of myself, which is Tim, and then he understood that. Actually, the journey started really in an early age. I was around eight, nine uh, years old, and I remember looking into the mirror and having a script of my own show, where I'm, in, I'm the, I'm the uh, presenter, I'm the one who answers, I'm the fan of myself, and I'm the full package, just to entertain myself. And my mom saw that. And I remember my mom came to me, and there was um, an advertisement on the newspaper. They are looking for young presenters for a kids show or something. And she said, oh my God, you should go there, but you should talk to your father. I said, no, I'm afraid, because at that time, eight years old, uh, 1999, at that time, like a girl, a female figure, it's not something very familiar to see her on TV, maybe in the news, but not like the entertaining way. So she said, go and I'll have your back. I said, okay. So I was looking, yeah, she's, she's behind me, and I'm taking the newspaper to my dad, and he saw that. Then he actually threw the newspaper away. He said, no girls on TV. And like, all my dreams been crushed on that. And I look at my back, I didn't see my mother. <laughs> um, so it started that way. 10 years later, the life changed. Everything changed without even asking my father. I just told him, I'm going to study media. And like, you know how time changes and you don't know what happened and everything just normal. Um, I studied and I had that passion. And I said, now it's social media era. Why I'm still stuck with TV and the traditional media. Let's create something where it's online. So I created my own magazine, which I've, um, it was online and printed. Uh, and it went like it was a nice success, actually. After that, I said, okay, I did a magazine. We did this printed part. Let's do the radio. So I created the first online radio show in the UAE. And it was called um, On Air with Tame. I was influenced at that time with um, On Air with, um, what's his name? Ryan, I guess. So I had that name. And it was a really success and a hit, like, 40k plays per episode so it gave me this so i said okay team now you've been behind the scenes a lot let's just be in front of the camera youtube was there so i opened my channel and it was really organic i, I remember the first video on youtube the first vlog was just me going to dubai mall and it was phenomenal because in the gulf no girl had took the camera and recorded just a normal life just me going to the mall. To people, it was silly. It was pointless. I remember friends of my mom and her, her aunt, uh, my aunts were telling her, like, why is she showing us? We're not interested. People are not interested to see about her house or family. Who is she so that people would be interested? I remember those words. But I ignored that because I have my mother on my side. And I continued doing vlogs and content. And it had elevated. Uh, travel vlogs, um, event vlogs, and then it all came in and then it turned into an income, which was the interesting part as well. So Anas Bukhash, I remember one of the people who actually encouraged me and said, yes, Tim, now let's do contracts with people, let's do so. He opened my eyes actually into making revenue and he, had, he didn't have a company uh, by that time, it's just like a friend actually. And then started with one of the biggest contracts I've ever signed was at Salat, uh, being an ambassador for two years. So with that was actually the biggest push for me. I have now eight restaurants because of social media. <laughs> I can't explain, I can't tell you how important it is. I can't tell you figures, I can't tell you numbers because this explains this. this it's just logic. It's, um, We've been always struggling with people underestimating bloggers. Not, let's not even just say influencers, because a, peop, a person with an influence is something huge. A bad or good. But let's say just the basic thing of social media, a blogger. They underestimate a blogger. Okay, we work from, for example, 8 a.m. till 3 or 4, or maybe at banks till 7 p.m. to get 
the one coverage for a salary for a whole month for someone, one coverage for one hour of an influencer who went to a perfume shop, for example. So they did nothing, they just raised their phones. That's, I'm telling you how people actually think about it, and I actually think about it that way, because it makes sense, yeah. For just one hour, and they get the amount that we get sitting on our desks for eight, nine hours. Um, and they underestimate that the, actually, mentally, you have to always be prepared, which is, this is a whole different thing, because I'm not always happy. I'm not always, I don't always want to, if I see someone on the street and they, oh, team, maybe sometimes in a, I'm in a bad mood to actually interact even with people. So mentally and health-wise, we're not always there. So that's a thing. It's not like so I'm not like a clown who would always be entertaining people and stuff like that. So that's on mental health and stress and stuff like that. But other than that, editing, being able, to, because I could go to the perfume shop for an hour, talk about it, and no one would go there. I can't do that. But if I go there with determination, with confidence, with knowing how to sell that per perfume, and I know what to put first and what to put last, and I script it inside my mind, and I tell them, no, let's do it that way. So all of this effort, yes, it's an hour, but I've scripted, I've done my job so that they could call me again and tell me, come. Because I don't want to just be visiting places, having money from everywhere, and then I have a bad reputation of just being there and that. No, I make sure that I have that quality of content.